Okay, I'm Ned Simper. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I have been in the, involved in the sheep business and raising lambs since I was nine years old. Um, so this is my 35th year doing this. Um, I'm the chairman over the um, sheep for the Cache County Fair. So uh, what this is about is just uh, kind of give you some insights on what to do and what to look for when you're picking out lamb. So you want them um, at about three months old, two okay. to three months old. You want them born in January or February. Um, you can make a March lamb, lamb work, uh -huh. but it's extremely hard. You have to put a lot of feed and a lot of effort into it in order to get it to make weight mm -hmm. for the fair. Um, so you kind of want to stick with January, February lambs. Okay. Um, you want to start looking in March. March and April is kind of when you is kind of when producers start selling their animals. Um, that's kind of when you want to start looking. Um, definitely want to get one secured by May um, <clears throat> and get get ready to go get going on your project in May. So the, the breeds that do the wet the, do the best are Suffolk and Hams. Okay, and which um, one's this one here? This one's a Ham Cross. Okay. So it's a it's a it's a, the mom was Suffolk, the dad is a Hampshire. Uh huh. Um, so more and more is becoming uh, Hampshire. Oh. So Hampshire is more and more popular. Yeah. Um, becoming more of the breed that's recognized and more of the breed that's winning the shows. <laughs> somebody who has some experience, somebody who's been around doing it for a while, um, you want to look for a breed that's willing to help you too. Yeah. You want to look oh. for somebody that's that's willing to give you some knowledge, willing to help you, um, willing to wanting to see you succeed. Um, talk to other people who've been doing it before, find out where they're getting lambs. Uh, find out and there's a ton of breeders ton of, of people in the area a ton of people who are knowledgeable um, and that's what I would do is just ask around um, kind of see who's willing to help you yeah because if, if you buy them from a one time then you're gonna come back next year right if <laughs> or, you have good experience yeah, yeah if you, have you don't have a good experience you're gonna go somewhere else yeah, you'll go somewhere or else. you're not gonna do it again so I charge about $250 uh, a lamb you can spend upwards of thousands of oh, dollars oh wow <laughs> um, the average cost, I would say, in between has been between two hundred and fifty and three hundred and fifty dollars. Uh -huh. um, it takes about one hundred and fifty to two hundred dollars to to feed a lamb correctly. Uh -huh. So, uh, cost wise, you're looking at spending anywhere from four hundred to six hundred bucks on average. Okay. If you want to be more competitive, try and win the show. There's, I mean, like I said, you can spend thousands you, of dollars. Yeah, you buy different feed and different things, or you better feed and stuff like different that. Different genetics, and, genetics. And, there's, and there's lambs out there that'll go for 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 and up. Oh, wow. Um, so it just depends upon how what your budget is and how competitive you want to be. Uh -huh. um, but you can easily get a decent lamb that'll do very well for 250 to $350. Yeah, and sometimes it's a kind of a, not a luck of the draw, but sometimes you get a good one. So, sometimes you know. there's some luck involved. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes there's some how you take care of them and feed them. Yeah. Um, sometimes genetics plays a part. Yeah. So there's a multitude of things that play that are part of this that play into it and are, in, are involved in, in that one. Yeah. And then what um, what do you think is the most important thing? So you, your feed is it's really important. <laughs> um, you do mostly hay uh, or like so a good show grain. So show you want to you want to find a good show grain. You want to find something that's readily available in your area. Uh -huh. You don't want to find something that maybe is a good feed and maybe you're going to run out of. Somebody's not going to keep you in supply. Oh, yeah. There's several yeah. options. Um, IFA carries yeah. a, lot, a lot of different feeds, a lot of different uh, brands. I personally feed Show Right. Show Right. Um, High Noon is another uh, competitive brand. Yeah. Also makes some feed. Um, but definitely you want to be consistent and you want to make sure that you're, you stick yeah. with the Okay. You don't want to change feeds. That'll put them off six, for a little while. Six or... weeks from now, you don't want to change feed. You want to be consistent to keep them on the same feed throughout the whole process. And that, that just makes it so they're they're used to it. They don't get off their feed and maybe kind of right. foul them up a little yep. bit. Yep. Get sick, then you then you got to start all over again. Especially when it gets close to the to the fair. Yeah. You don't want to change feeds because you're gonna upset them. Yeah. And then they're then they're sick and not yeah. eating or whatever, not yep. getting, getting weight. So. And then you want to also feed them alfalfa, alfalfa hay. You don't need to feed them a lot. Right. Um, just a little bit, just to keep their rumen and stuff going. Yeah. And then do you, uh, as far as your, if you had one lamb or two lambs, do you separate and make sure you see what they eat as far as the grain and stuff? Or it just so kinda, it depends upon how many you have. It depends upon how many you have, what, what, if they're both similar in weight, 
both you're both you're trying to um, get them to the both to the same end goal. Uh -huh. Then you would want to feed them the same. But if you got the one that's a lot bigger than the other and one that's smaller than the other, then you're definitely going to want to watch and wait and, and uh, watch and see what uh, they do because obviously you're going to feed them different. Um, if you're only going to raise two lambs at your place, try and pick out lambs that are similar in size. Oh. So then you don't have to um, try and manipulate and so oh. try and hold one back while you're trying to push the yeah. other one. Yeah, if you're doing if you're doing is a is a family or you got two or three um, kids doing it together, try and get lambs that are similar in size. Uh -huh. Then you don't have to worry about trying to separate them. Um, and lambs do better when you feed them together. Mm. The competition oh. actually helps them. Kind of like yeah, they just they eat and say, hey, you're eating my stuff. I'm gonna eat right. this stuff. So they right. kind of maybe so eat they, more. They eat, yep, they eat better. They're more competitive. Um, but that's going to be what I would suggest. Um, one of the first things you want to look for is you want to make sure that a lamb's structurally sound. Uh -huh. That means that its its legs are straight. Um, it stands good on its legs. Um, you want you don't if the lamb is limping or a lamb's got a twisted leg, even if it may be a good lamb, that's something you want to stay away from. Yeah. That's one of the first things you want to do is make sure they're structurally correct and structurally sound. Yeah. Okay. Um, the okay. next thing you want to look for is bone. You want to look for lambs who have a lot of structure and a lot of bone. So you want to look for big legs, legs that are extremely big. That means they, they'll carry more weight, mm -hmm. they'll carry more meat, they'll be structurally more sound. Um, one of the biggest parts on the lamb is what they call the loin. So if you feel right here, he's got his rib cage, his rib cage is right there. If you feel that second rib in to back here, where there's a knot right here, that area right there is about that deep. It's called the loin. Uh -huh. That is the most critical part on a lamb. That's the that's the prime cut. Oh. One of the prime cuts on a lamb. Uh -huh. So you want to look for something that's that's uh, square, that's long, right in this area. That's bigger than than the rest in that area. And you want to make sure they have a straight a straight back. Uh -huh. If you got one that's got a, a dipped back, you can't correct that. That's uh -oh. not a good trait. Um, so you want to make sure they're good and level and straight across the back. Um, and then the next thing you want to look for is the size of their legs. Leg of lamb um, is, a, is also a prime cut on lambs. So the bigger, the better. The more bulgy they are, um, the better. Um, and then you want to look for muscling. You want to look for one that's got more muscle than others because muscle is a good trait. Muscle is the yeah. meat, the meat, the weed. Right. And we're basically raising this these animals to eat or to, to produce meat. That's the ultimate end goal. But you want something with big bone and you want something that's square. Ah! You want something that looks like a box. Okay, more of a if box. If it slopes off like this, that's not a good trait. So mostly you want them you want them square. Add. You're looking for something that's a box. The bigger that box is, the better. The better. Oh, okay. Because that's where the meat comes from. Uh -huh. So 90% of the meat on a lamp comes from right here, that second rib back. Oh, okay. Very little is used on the front. Um, they use show, they do make uh, shoulder ropes out of the front, but but the majority ah! of, majority of the meat on the lamb comes from the back. So basically, you want it to look like a box. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's good. Bigger, bigger the box, the better. Yeah. And then you want to make sure it's structurally correct. Make sure ah! legs are straight. Make sure it's walking uh -huh. correctly. Ah! And then make sure it's level. He got, got a big dip in his back. That that means there's something structurally wrong with that animal. The, yeah. and no matter how good, how big you get it, there's always going to be something structurally long, wrong with it. Because if it's that. got a dip in his back, yeah, it's always going to have a dip in his back. Yeah, that's, not that's just something that it can't be corrected. Yeah. Okay. So back to when to look for a lamb. You're going to want about an 80, 80, 80 pound lamb, 70 to 80 pound lamb towards the end of May. So when Buy your lamb. Say you're gonna wait till May to buy your lamb. You're looking for a 70 or 80 pound okay. lamb. What do they have to be? To, when they, how much do they have to be? Is it a certain weight? Uh -huh. They have to be 100 pounds. 100 pounds in August. Oh, okay. Um, you can gain on average about a half a pound a day oh, on wow. good, good quality feed. You can get a half a pound a day. You can get upwards of one pound a day on lambs. Uh, the deeper it gets into the summer and the hotter it gets, the harder it is to achieve that goal. Just because they, it's just hotter. They, more, they eat know. less when when it's hotter. Yeah. They they don't uh, perform as well. Yeah. Um, their intake goes down. Um, one of the other key, key things is water. Oh. If 
a lamb a lamb has to have access to fresh clean water. if a lamb runs out of water and it does not have water it won't eat oh it just will not eat so if your lamb, if your lamb all of a sudden just stops eating well, check its water source. Make sure that it's got plenty of water. Make sure it's fresh water. Make sure it's clean water. Yeah. If you have to dump the bucket out every day, dump the bucket out every day. Get clean. Um, because that's one of the other keys to, to raising lambs is water. Water. If if they don't, if they can't drink, they, they won't eat. Oh, is it? So they they have to have a place for shade to cool off too. As far yeah, you're gonna want to keep. You're gonna want to have some place for them to get out of the sun, get out of the weather. <laughs> um, some places shelters, uh, calf hutches work good. Um, just small shelters if you're just raising a couple of lambs. You don't need an, an, an enormous Big one. structure like this. Oh. You can actually get away with just something small. Just something where they can get out of the weather and get out of the wind and get out of the sun that when it sun. gets warmer. Oh.